Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, through grace the Lord with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, through grace the Lord with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord with thee. Blessed. Art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
as we walk together today as a faith community in union and solidarity with each other. And we walk here a symbol, indeed, not just of this little journey from the roadside to here. It is but a symbol of all of our individual journeys through life. That we cannot oh. achieve what we have. We walk in petition for what we need. We walk in openness to what God may do in us. And we walk in hope. Water, of course, we are surrounded by it here. Uh, indeed, uh, people afterwards, indeed, will bring maybe their own water with them. But at the start of our Mass, we are going to bless the water here. And indeed, in asking for God's blessing on the water, reminding us that our journey has begun on the waters of baptism. That we have called that water for God's protection and blessing throughout our lives. Lord, bless this water, source of life and nourishment. It gives fullness to all living things and refreshes us. Protect us from all danger, ill health, and broken dreams. May we always thirst for you, knowing that you alone can satisfy our quest for freedom and wholeness. Give us your protection and strength, and life-giving presence today and always. Amen. To us on our journey, may we always walk with confidence and courage. May we always reach out to our fellow companions as we journey together in life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we remind ourselves we need renewal, we need re-cleansing as we confess our own sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask that many ever virgins, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Bring to perfection the gifts he has given us. And our prayers and readings are for today's Mass, the 22nd Sunday of the year. Almighty God, every good thing comes from you. Fill our hearts with love for you. Increase our faith and by your constant care protect the good you've given us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you as the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Amen. And just reading, a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, take notice of the laws and customs that I teach you today, and observe them, that you may have life and may enter and take possession of the land that the Lord of your God, your Father, has given you. You must add nothing to what I command you, and take nothing from it. But keep the commandments of the Lord your God, just as I lay them down for you. Keep them, observe them, and they will demonstrate to the people your wisdom and understanding. When they come to know all these laws, they will exclaim, No other people is as wise and as prudent as this great nation. And indeed, what great nation is there that has its gods too near as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call to him? And what great nation is there that has laws and customs to match these whole laws that I put before you today? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. The response to the psalm, the just will live in the presence of the Lord. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. Lord, who shall dwell on your holy mountain? He who walks without faith, <coughs> he who acts with justice and speaks the truth from his heart. He who does no wrong to his brother, who casts no slur on his neighbor, who holds the godless in disdain, but honors those who fear the Lord. He who keeps his faith, come what may, who takes no interest on a loan, and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a man will stand firm forever. From the letter of St. James. It is all that is good, everything that is perfect, which is given us from above, it came down from the Father of all light. With him there is no such thing as alteration, no shadow of a change. By his own choice he made us his children by the message of the truth, 
so that we should be a sort of first fruit of all that he had created. Accept and submit to the word which has been planted in you and can save your souls. But you must do what the word tells you and not just listen to it and deceive yourselves. Pure, unspoiled religion in the eyes of God our Father is this, coming to the help of orphans and widows when they need it and keeping oneself uncontaminated by the word. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. So some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, and they noticed that some of the disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and the Jews in general follow the tradition of the elders and never eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes asked them, why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders but eat their food with unclean hands. He answered, It was of you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of scripture. This people honors me only with lip service, while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandment of God to cling to human traditions. He called the people to him again and said, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing goes into a man from outside can make him unclean. It is the things that come out of a man that makes him unclean. For it is from within, from men's hearts, that evil intentions emerge, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, malice, deceit, indecency, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and make a man unclean. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please take a seat if you have one. And first of all, I'd like to say that I'm very privileged to be speaking here today and I thank Father Andy for giving me this privilege. I've always had a great interest in Church Island, ever since I was first brought here by John Henry and Bella Scullion, and they gave me, Bella gave me a guided tour of the island and showed me the headstones and the inscriptions on them, explained the layout of the church and the stone of St. Patrick and the other great stone that's here that had a special significance. So it was exciting for me to see all that and to visit this consecrated place that is sanctified, as Father Doan mentioned at the beginning of the Mass, sanctified by the steps of the monks, by the traditions that they gave to the generations that lived here and the communities on both sides of Loch Beg and in Ballyscunion and, and uh, to the people of a wider community that they serve because their teaching and their instruction went to a wider field, as you know. So we're in a very hallowed and sanctified place, and it's a great privilege for us all to be here. And for me, it's a special honor to speak to you about it. It reminds us of the annals of our country because in the annals of Inishfallen and in the annals of Ulster and in the annals of the Four Masters, we hear this place mentioned. And in those annals and the ancient Irish texts and documents, it's always referred to as Inish Tede de Wally Scullin. So it has an ancient title and an ancient record of history and of um, interesting events that occurred here down through the ages. As well as those occurrences, there's also, of course, 
the great work that went on here, here you can imagine that the monks weren't idle. They were busy about uh, transcribing books and making those illuminated manuscripts that are still one of the wonders of the world to see today with their beautiful colors and the wonderful lettering and the precise uh, workmanship and craftsmanship that went into the making of those beautiful texts of the Psalters and the Gospels and the sacred scriptures. So we have those treasures. We also have the other great artifacts that the monks produced in the um, bells, in the chalices, in the filigree work, and in the um, magnificent metalwork and jewelry that they produced for the ornamentation of the altars and churches. So the monks did all that, but they did more. They gave the people a deep spirituality, a spirituality that survived the centuries, and centuries that brought invasions and incursions from the Danes and the Norsemen, from the Saxons and from other intruders who came here and stormed the country and pillaged and plundered. But the people clung on to their native heat and they, they also retained the great religious tradition and kept to the old faith, that faith which stood them in such good stead throughout years, hundreds of years, centuries of persecution. Well, we're celebrating now 2,000 years in the history of salvation and 1,500 years of Christianity here. So it's a great celebration and significant year for us. But to begin with, the place that we're in, Inishtede, called after a saint, no doubt, the founder saint of the place, who was probably Saint Pape, and who probably belonged to one of the distinguished families who lived here. We know that Saint Patrick crossed the ban at where it leaves Loch Ney and pours, uh, where the waters pour into the valley of the ban. We know that Patrick crossed there from the Tripodite Light and from the description of Tirhan. And he says he crossed the ban at Farsad Tuma. And he came into a level plain, which he called himself in Latin, he called it Campus Albus, or in Irish it was called Thin Hour, or the Fair Plain. And St. Patrick said, I like this place, because, he said, it has the mountains, the Spirins and Sleep Gowan on that side, those mountains. He didn't know the names of them, but he asked the names and found out the name. And he says, it's this great sheet of water on the other side of Loch Ney and Loch Bay. And he said, that shining river flowing to the sea. He says, I like this place and I wish to sojourn here. So he did stay here, although he was opposed for a while by some of the Eterchi. This is the Eterchi territory, who were the main families from the Lungs and the Cassi. And they opposed him at first, but then later they welcomed him when he baptized him. That little girl played in the little beginning of the And he was welcomed then, and he did establish not only a church here, but he built seven other churches in the immediate area of Scotland, which we still have the names of and still have that likely tradition. I've mentioned just Dona Henry and Dona Fritz in County Corona, and uh, the, the churches around the Moyola Valley and up as far as Falmouth Street. So here, Patrick has that link with this place, and no wonder that there's a stone here lying in the ground of the island, which is still called St. Patrick's Stone, and it shows you how the people have kept that tradition alive all down the centuries, even when the place, perhaps they were prohibited from coming near the place, perhaps prevented from crossing the Sheskin over here, but still, the people who kept that tradition alive down through those centuries. So here we have that um, sacred place sanctified by those saints of St. Patrick and St. Pate, and then St. Pray, of course, had a close association with it, and then we come on to the monks. And we've already mentioned the great work they did in establishing their oratory and setting up the schools where they educated the youth and provided solace and consolation for the people 
and the destruction for them in religion. And they also, no doubt, erected Celtic crosses, although we have no relics of any Celtic crosses just here. But we have some not far away. And uh, in our bow, we still have the beautiful Celtic cross of our bow. And then, um, of course, we have the Celtic cross of Corina Cars down the, further down the band. Sadly, none have survived here, but I have no doubt that there were originally crosses here, but probably with the persons of the Danes in the 9th century, who read that they came up the band in their long ships, and they landed up here and moored their ships in Loch Bay, and um, they made incursions here and pillaged the monastery here, and then went on to St. Louis and Mahara and pillaged uh, that monastery as well. And um, they ravaged and stole all the sacred vessels and the manuscripts and the illuminated volumes that the monks had prepared. So we lost some of our great treasures, some of the national treasures of our country were taken away from the country, from this district at that time. Thankfully, we still have some relics left. We still have some of those beautiful manuscripts left. And we still have <laughs> St. Patrick's Bell, the shrine of St. Patrick's Bell, which is closely associated with this place because the custodians of that bell were the families of the Mulholland and the Milnes who shared the custodianship of St. Patrick's Bell. And they were given this trust to look after the shrine, that beautiful mounted silver work. And we can date the bell to the 11th century because of the inscription on it which says that it was made for uh, Ardgill McLaughlin's son and that it was to be kept and to be treasured and to be regarded by the people <coughs> as a memorial relic of St. Patrick. Actually, the people down through the centuries used it for swearing oaths and was always called an Irish club na Hutta, which means the bell of the testament or the bell of the oath and the people swore all oaths instead of using the bible they swore the bell of saint patrick they placed their hand on the bell and swore their undertakings and their vows and their oaths on that vessel which reminded them of our national apostle so these are marvelous traditions that we have and priceless heritage that we still cherish and still venerate to this day. And thank God that we have that tradition and that we have kept it alive. No one can take that from us. But what did it all come from? Why for 2,000 years have we cherished those traditions and those practices and the prayers and the devotions during all those centuries? And the reason is out of the love of God. And because God gave us that faith, he allowed us to receive that magnificent gift of <coughs> true faith from St. Patrick down to all the other pastors and saints who dwelt here and who handed on the faith. Down through generations, parents handing it on to their children and training them carefully in the devotional practices this has been kept up all those years. Thank God for that. And it has survived. And I know in our time, we have seen great convulsions in our own country and in other countries. We've seen the breakdown of the satellites, uh, the satellite countries of Europe. And we've seen um, the breaking of the Berlin Wall. We've seen the downfall of atheistic materialism in Russia. And we've seen those convulsions in our own country too coming from civil conflict. We have come through it with our faith intact and with our confidence in God's goodness still with us. So we have to thank God for that. But what animated the people in the past that they handed on that tradition, what, what really motivated them was their knowledge and conviction of the truth of what they had heard and their confidence in God's goodness to humanity. So we have that gift, and please God, we'll hand it on. People say now that 
we are up against great problems in the present age and that we have to face untold um, challenges in the days to come. But those challenges need not frighten us because we have a strength and we have a power that will overcome any incursion or any threat. And that power that we have comes from our faith in God and our knowledge that he is with us all days until the end of time. And we have also confidence in our youth. We know that our youth of today are young people who are direct and honest and full of conviction. And we are confident that they will be able to stand up to these challenges and face them. And I'm delighted to see so many young people here today. It's so encouraging to see the young men and the young women, the boys and the girls, turning out on an occasion like this and taking full part in it because they're taking part in that heritage that we have mentioned, that Father Dole mentioned at the beginning of the Mass, a heritage of goodness and uh, <coughs> devotion to God and faith and love of God. And that heritage is something that no one will ever take away from us, please God. To we'll thrive and when we keep traditions like this, when we gather together in <coughs> solidarity, all united around the altar, offering the beautiful sacrifice of the Mass, then we're carrying out Christ's command, do this in memory of me. Now, there was a man who was from here who sailed the seven seas. And um, at the last commemoration here, uh, someone published uh, a poem that that man had written. He died far away from home in a remote place. And somebody just handed me, before I came on the altar, somebody handed me this poem that this sailor had composed when he was of this beautiful place, a place of pilgrimage and of devotion. The Song of Church Island, by mountain and valley, by lake shore and island, where the band's crystal waters flow down to the sea, by bogland and meadow, by woodland and highland, I wandered full often o'er break, friend and lee. When the pale autumn moon lit up the church island, or the mirror deep in the loch's crystal tide, where clear in its depths shone the fane of my fathers, where the dust of my kindred reposed side by side. O oh, calm is your lake, and thrice calm is your river. I've gazed on the Tiber and roamed by the Clyde. I've seen the Ohio roll forth in splendor, but my heart longs to stray where the barren waters glide. But the friends of my childhood are scattered and silent, like leaves of the forest when autumn winds blow. Some sleep their last sleep in the shade of your island, where the shamrocks grow green and the barren waters flow. And soon shall I fall across that lone border, where eternity's hilltop will mystic and drear. But Loch Beg and the island shall ne'er hold the stranger, for the hopes of my youth time are withered and sore. Yet Erin Mavonian still green by the valleys, the mountains and woodlands, thy bogland and lea, and calm may they sleep in the wave-washed church island where the band's crystal waters flow down to the sea. Well, I think the man that wrote that really had a master to look our arm, go woor me and ton or new, couple of fuckle or all you, er an okaid shaw, August go and buyas, listen, ahro dolan, August the winter na paris je, as an privileged shaw hoch tu, August, um, I may do go me go me puntus more, or go to the more, or go to the other side the leg as an okaj, or go to as an elecraft a ring with you. I must congratulate you as I finish on the noble task that you have set yourselves in extending and refurbishing your beautiful church in Balahi, and I congratulate your pastor, Father Dolan and all your all the parishioners of the parish on undertaking that task i know it's a daunting task but you've had the courage and the inspiration from your parish priest and um, i know that it will bring you all the greatest satisfaction and you've started it in a significant year in the jubilee year of uh, the 2000th year of our salvation as we start the third millennium so God bless you all in that undertaking. 
and uh, I can assure you that we will all be supportive in any way we can of that great task. And I'm delighted now to conclude by thanking you all for listening. I'm sorry I went on a bit longer than I intended, but um, we're lucky we've got such a beautiful day for the occasion, and you had, many of you had seats, so it wasn't too uncomfortable, I hope. And um, it, was a, it was a great thrill for me to be able to speak about a place that is so significant in Irish history and that has such a significance in the history of our salvation as well. Thank Father Reddy, even at this juncture, for his great words of information and inspiration. Thank you very much indeed. It's been most uplifting, encouraging, and your words of support as well. I very much appreciate it personally, and I'm sure by the parishioners as well. So we, we have been honoured to have you, and the effort you've been to it, hopefully indeed, is a benefit and kind to all of us. Thank you very much. Today we recall for the needs of the church that we will be blessed with good leadership and faith and morals through our Pope, bishops and priests. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For all our people that we may be strong in faith and make Christ real for others by our way of living. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For peace and reconciliation in our land that people of varying faiths and traditions may live side by side and at ease with each other. May we find the ability to forgive the hurts and wounds inflicted over the years and the humility to seek forgiveness ourselves. Lord, hear us. For vocations that men and women in our times will answer the call of Christ with the same spirit of generosity as those of previous generations and bring the good news to people at home and abroad. Lord, hear us. May the Holy Spirit protect us from the spirit of paganism and evil which threaten our Christian way of life. Lord, hear us. For all Irish men and women living abroad, that they may be sustained and inspired by their faith. May they and we find our true homeland in the kingdom of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, yes. For our beloved dead, we remember today all who are buried at this hallowed place and all who have been associated with this pilgrimage. Today, we think of Johnny Laverty, Simon Brown, Pat Quigley, James Diamond, Mary and Bridget Kilpatrick, Esther McGahey, Annie Mulholland, Kieran Duffin, Master Pollock, Father Flanagan, and Father Duffy. Lord, hear us. And as we remember the dead we have named, others indeed quickly come to mind from previous years, and we to them say a special remembrance. So we just unite all our intentions as we place ourselves, our own lives, our homes, all our concerns at the hands of Mary to her powerful intercession and patronage as we pray. Hail Mary.
prayers and sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. All your actions show your wisdom and love. Before man, you don't like the hell of the whole world to serve you as creator and rule over all creatures. He is a big good lot your friendship. You do not abandon the power of death. The whole of all to seek can find you. May this Holy Spirit sanctify these offerings. Let them become the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. As we celebrate the good mercy which you left us an everlasting covenant. May all we love those who are all in the world. When the time came for him to be glorified by you as Heavenly Father, he showed the depth of his love. While the rest of he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. He thanks, praise, he forgive, and giving the cup to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead, his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and your apostles and saints, then in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. We can stand there and maybe we'll say together, and if you know it, you can join in with us, and not just say it. Thank you, really. As we'll pray as Jesus taught us, he must come to our feet, for we are standing here, you and the young of us. Our lover, our young, our lover, our heaven, our glory, our name, thy will be done in our trespasses and heaven, as we want to pay our daily bread, our trespasses, our white religion, our trespasses, our conviction, our God, our sheer shambles. And God has released the young of your kingdom, for you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you all. And the peace of the Lord be with each <laughs> we who are called to his supper, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Only say the word and I shall be healed. Receive again, even you have received already today, all right? I see the stars. I
Pilgrim's Prayer of Thanksgiving. Life-giving God, we thank you. You have always watched over us. You have blessed us with signs of your presence. We come to you now as we find ourselves needing to take up the staff of pilgrimage once more. We are in need of energy and renewed hope. We are in need of your grace to redirect our hearts. May we go forward in truth, love and hope, ever mindful of your truth which leads and guides us. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Stay with us, Lord. We pray you and show us the path of life. A personal prayer at the journey's end. My thanks to you, Father, for the pilgrim journey we have undertaken. Our thanks for the strength and heart to walk in your presence. Our thanks for your supporting love along the way. Our thanks for the rest and peace now at the end of it all. Here in your house, may we taste the peace of heaven. May we taste the joy of being cleansed and forgiven. May we taste the fullness of your love. From this day forth, let all our journeys echo with the meaning of this journey. Wherever we go, let us bring with us an awareness of your presence and the joy of your kingdom where you live with your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> May this food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you in each other. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't want to extend your patience and your <coughs> goodwill any further just to say thank you very much for being a very prayerful and attentive congregation and indeed that's from the youngest to the oldest. It has been very, very uplifting <coughs> just witnessing your participation from here. We're all participating in the ceremony today. My co celebrants Father Frank and Father Art, and I say again just uh, New Year's and our, all our thanks to Father Reddy for his words today. I say those who came to the next meeting, especially grateful and as we sat and talked some about the Church Island and the very traditions associated with it. You know, as we came here today to celebrate, I also felt we were coming really to mourn and to grieve too, that many things of our past which should have been handed on to us and were lost to us. We always have to remind ourselves that they are part of our grieving always, that so many things have been inflicted on our people. And uh, today we give thanks to God for the spirit that has seen people through such dark days. And that ever from the enemy without, that the enemy within would never destroy us. In other words, our own complacency or taking things for granted. So I say I, we are glad to be here. I say I'm glad for, to all who have helped put this together. And as you say, it doesn't happen by accident. A lot of hard work. Public body looks after this place all the time. But then there was uh, Johnny and Willie and Paddy Joe and Eugene and others who <coughs> cut the grass here. Put the altar up here. We brought the seats, the various bits and pieces together for today. And a lot of, say, of hard work has gone into it. It's difficult when you mention names, but uh, those are certainly I must. And of course, it's a long way from here to the circus if you forget something. <laughs> Brian, you forgot nothing. <laughs> You just can't juke around the corner for it, you know. <laughs> so everything was listed and uh, may the blessing of peace fall upon this evening. Peace in our hearts and in our homes. Peace in our world. May the blessing of peace upon us. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of forgiveness fall upon us this evening. Forgiveness for ourselves and for those who have hurt us. May the blessing of forgiveness be upon us. Amen. May the blessing of hope fall upon us this evening, hope in our pain and hope in our joys, hope for those who are tempted to give up, hope for all those who need it. May the blessing of hope be upon us. Amen. May the blessing of gratitude fall upon us this evening, gratitude for all that has been, for the growth and the opportunities. May the blessing of gratitude be upon us. Amen. May the blessing of humility fall upon us this evening, a humility that accepts who we are and what has happened to us in life. 
May the blessing of humility be upon us. Amen. May the blessing of companionship fall upon us this evening. May we be gracious enough to accompany others in happy and in difficult times. May the blessing of companionship be upon us. Amen. May the blessing of openness fall upon us this evening. Openness to the hand of God in our lives. May the blessing of openness be upon us. Amen. Amen. And may all the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, come upon us and remain with us always. Let us go forth in peace and in the joy of the risen Lord. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. For those who are provided with transport, for Q, for others who are here taking photographs and recording today as well, thank you very much. Again, a safe journey home and any blessings go with you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I like it. Use it. Throw it back in there. And take it out. Put it on the tree. So you have to just rub it into that, and then rub it onto your ear, and then put it on the tree. I have to go into it. You have to go to it. You have to go to it. No, I want to go in. Send me another. Send me another. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, That's all right. Anna, you didn't come any harm, did I? No, I was speaking to you. Well, it was there, Raymond. Oh, I'm going to go. Are you just going to sit down? That's for tea.